Hi everybody, Andrea Trowski here. So I've been a tutor for dental hygiene and dental assisting students since 2005. So I help to teach them past the board exam. In our VIP board exam prep academy, we have weekly study topics. There's modules, there's live classes, there are class recordings, and of course, mock exams and case studies, lots of those. This week is week eight for us. So we are going over ethics. Well, sorry, we did that kind of last week, but we are going over ethics and pharmacology. And this week, is now the mock exam practice on that. So if you're curious how you are doing with your ethics and professionalism, I'm going to go over a few mock exam questions for you to really see if you are ready for the board exam. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, again, this was part of a pharmacology and ethics PowerPoint, but let's go through it. So do you guys know this question? What is informed consent? Feel free to pause the video if you need some time to think about it, okay? So what is informed consent? Would you say A, B, C, or D? So informed consent is actually A and C. So this is how I explained it to my students in the class today. So ethics, informed consent is about the patient being informed of what's happening. It's kind of like assuming. I know we should never assume, but when they make that appointment, when they show up at the dental office, when they're sitting in your chair, when they follow you to the back room, when they sit in the chair, you're just assuming they know they're in the dental office, they're okay with the appointment today. But this is why as the dental professional, you need to say, hello, Mr. Smith, it's nice to see you. You are in for your teeth cleaning appointment today. Did you have any questions about anything? And they'll say no. If they don't say anything, then you might want to say you're in for a teeth cleaning appointment today. Is that okay with you? You have to get their informed consent. So that's what this means. But part of critical thinking is you should also know just because they're there, just because they made that appointment and they're in the office, they still have the right to say no to treatment. They have the right to say, hey, you know what? I'm kind of busy. I don't want to do the polish today. And you can't say, well, oh shoot, I see in the computer here, you're booked for a scale, polish, and x-rays. Well, that was our plan. We had set the time aside. That's the money we're expecting to get. So sorry, you can't refuse a polish. They absolutely can. At any point in their treatment, they can either accept or refuse treatment. It's up to them. You have to give them all of the information for them to make that decision. So that's where C comes in. So a good example is let's say a patient, um, a patient doesn't want x-rays. You can't just say ethically, oh, okay, sure, fine, no problem. You have to give them more information. You, you have to say, absolutely, that is no problem. You have the right to refuse x-rays today. But just so you're aware, with you denying x-rays today, we can't see fully inside the mouth. So we might miss something. We might miss cavities that are in between the teeth. You did talk about this tooth being sensitive. I looked inside the mouth. I don't see anything. An x-ray would help to take a closer look inside the mouth. So I'm not missing something. But do you do you understand that is that okay with you that you understand we're not giving you the best treatment we could the patient might say yes that's fine i just don't want x-rays like leave me alone i would then have them sign something <laughs> just to cover your butt right or they might say oh shoot i didn't realize x-rays were really that important can you explain more or okay sure i guess i should have them done today this is informed consent you need to inform them of what's happening but also explain Okay, this is a direct definition. What is veracity? You can take a second to think about it. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. Okay, so veracity is telling the truth. This is a direct definition, is part of your code of ethics, both for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. They're slightly different, but telling the truth is all of them. Veracity means telling the truth. Telling a client that the needle's not going to hurt is not telling the truth. I mean, we all say it in the real world, but technically we're not being ethical because that's not true. Telling them they need a crown on that tooth just because when they have a little occlusal filling isn't telling the truth. That's not the definition of needing a crown. So as dental professionals, we have to act ethically by telling the truth. I'm going to skip a few slides. Let's do this one. What is direct supervision? What do you guys think? What is direct supervision? This one confuses students often because there's direct supervision and there's general 
supervision. I did explain this in the class probably for like 15 minutes where I went over the answer. I'm going to summarize it a bit for you guys, but what do you guys think? So direct supervision is when the dentist needs to be physically present, but this does depend on the procedure. So direct supervision is they need to be present. They could be present in the room or they could be present in the office, but direct means directly physically present. If the dental assistant is taking an impression for bleaching trays, does the dentist need to be watching them? No. But does the dentist need to be in the office? Yes. If the patient has nitrous oxide administered, does the patient, or sorry, does the dentist have to be there with the dental professional, either the dental assistant or the dental hygienist? Yes. They need to be watching them in that room, not just in the office. So it depends on the procedure. Okay. So how did you guys do with those questions? Those were ethics and professionalism questions that you need to know, both for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. So if you guys need help, let me know. I'm always here. The nice thing about the VIP Board Exam Prep Academy is you can sign up anytime. It is learn at your own pace, but you can also follow along with us if we're doing live classes within that cohort. It's typically every three or four months. And the nice thing is, even if you come at a time where we're not doing the live classes, I still come on live once a week to talk about your topics in our members only Facebook group and you have our previous class recordings to listen to. So you have PowerPoint modules to read if you like to read. You have mock exams and case studies if you want to take those, but you also have me teaching you the lectures. So you don't have to open up your textbooks again if you don't want to. I've done the hard work for you and I've summarized everything. So let me know if you have any questions. You can check out the course at dentalL.com and I look forward to seeing you inside the course if you're taking the board exam soon. Bye for now.